Hello and welcome to the CNBC TV 18 Mumbai newsroom. I'm Ikta Patra and you're watching Your Stocks uh, this afternoon. Well, it's turning out to be a session where we have recovered a little bit, but largely you'd have to say it's just about consolidating consolidating uh, for the frontline indices. We have the Nifty, which is just about higher by around 20 odd points. We have the Sensex, which is higher by around 20 odd points at this point in time. The mid caps are faring better, so up around three tenths of percent currently for the mid cap index. And we have the advanced decline ratio, which is in positive terrain so 1600 stocks advancing to around 1300 stocks declining on the national stock exchange so what that's what's taking place for the markets the bank nifty absolutely flat we have a lot of queries lined up in the next 30 odd minutes start of the week uh, we have with us ashish kyal from wave strategy advisors and china mukaddam an independent market expert to answer all of your stock queries this afternoon ashish as well as shaina welcome to the show well let's uh, get going in terms of the first question that we have we have dipanshu kumar who writes to us from chandigarh he holds 20 shares of ultratech which he's bought at around 5000 odd rupees he asks if he should stay invested or take money off the table well sitting on a huge amount of gains there uh, with only around 20 shares bought so that's probably, uh, you know, patience uh, and the results of patience, which is indicative in terms of in his investment as well. So, Shaina, what would you recommend? On Ultratech, he's sitting on a good amount of profit. Do you think he should probably take some profits off the table or keep holding on? I believe he can take some profits off the table unless he is, it is part of his uh, long-term portfolio. And, you know, then one should not meddle with such stocks. But otherwise, uh, you know, valuations are extremely expensive at current <laughs> levels. So while cement prices have remained more or less at the same levels as it was a year back, uh, and raw material costs have come down, so we've seen the impact of this in the first quarter numbers that they declared were pretty decent. Uh, but given that, you know, one year forward, if you see on EV by EBITDA, it's about 15 times. So I believe you can take uh, profits off the table partially because it will consolidate in my view for some time. Okay, all right. Uh, and uh, Ashish, what would you recommend? Ultratech is very close to its 50-week high. Ultratech has uh, given a good rise. Uh, we can clearly see. And first of all, I would like to congratulate him for investing at around 5,000 and sticking back. So he's making some decent gains here. Uh, what I would recommend is he can book some partial profit. And uh, the stock is currently forming a flat pattern. Uh, if it manages to break out back above that 8,300 mark, we can expect it to go towards the level of 9,500 as well. So book partial profit and remaining keep trailing it uh, with a strict stop loss of around 3% on daily basis so that he can keep riding the trend from short term perspective. But from medium to long term perspective, I think he can hold on to the stock. It can even touch about 10,000 levels on the upside and uh, that's how he should ride it. Okay. All right, uh, so that's a view coming in on Ultratech Cement. Those are the BASF numbers for you. Net profit is down around 42 odd percent on a year on year basis. It's coming at around close to 113 odd crores. The revenue should also come up for you. But let's get to another query then. Sushil Kumar writes to us from New Delhi. He owns 50 shares of Paytm, uh, which he's bought at around 500 rupees. Medium term investor wants to know what to do, whether he should buy more or just stay invested, and if there are any other new age stocks to invest in. Well, for today, Paytm is reacting to its net loss, which is probably widened on a Q1, Q basis. So uh, it's Q1 uh, performance. But uh, Ashish, what would you recommend technically on uh, Paytm? Uh, see, if you look at Paytm, uh, we have seen some smart recovery in this stock from the levels of 700, touched the high of 900, and it is showing some uh, correction on the downside now. Uh, the, uh, the trading uh, entry is at around 500 levels, if I listen correctly. So that's a very decent entry that the person is having. So I would recommend to book profit at current levels. Uh, the stock moves with high volatility. So you might see it again moving back towards that 760, 740 mark very quickly. So it's best to be booking profit here. I'm not a fan of the new age stocks, given the volatility that we are seeing in all those kind of Zomato, Nika, uh, Paytm, all of these stocks. But it's a trading opportunity for them if uh, someone is looking not for investment opportunity. And uh, in Paytm, I would recommend to be booking profit and exit. Okay, all right. Shaina, your thoughts on Paytm and uh, the fundamentals? Yeah, I would concur. While we saw very decent uh, top line numbers for Paytm, uh, the loss has widened. So it obviously shows it's not a one way, you know, improvement in EBITDA margins. Uh, at the same time, I think the stock has rallied substantially. So I would take profits off the table and uh, partly. 
and also in in terms of other new uh, new age stocks that he is looking to invest i would prefer to go with some you know stocks which uh, where you know companies which are making profits even as of now so something like a is my trip or uh, even uh, i would go with something like a reddington uh, you know these companies are making profits attractive valuation so one can look at these okay all right so that's the view coming in on ptm and other new age stocks that one can invest in we have another query now venkateshwarlu atmakuru writes to us from tamil nadu he owns 900 shares of cms info systems which is bought at around 216 rupees medium term investor wants to know what to do with this particular stock sitting on a profit as we speak uh, whether or not they should hold on or sell this particular counter shaina yeah he should hold on uh, it's a good fast growing business you know the the results were just out and the management has given very good guidance going forward uh, while their cash business atm business continues to contribute a major chunk of 65% the other businesses are increasing contribution uh, and i think uh, valuations uh, are not uh, too stretched so one can continue holding in my view okay all right and ashish would you concur that view uh yes indeed because the overall trend of the stock is uh, decently up and we can clearly see the it mid cap space has been buzzing around the large cap has been corrected sharply but the mid cap has been buzzing around we saw a rounding bottom in cms info systems and given a, a good breakout right now forming a small consolidation pattern i think the stock is headed towards the level of 4 uh, 34 40 on the upside so hold on here and uh, on the downside uh, the support of the stock is around 349 Okay all right so uh that's the view coming in on CMS Info Systems the CEO itself the stock is rallied around 20 odd percent let's get to another query now this time from the metal space we have Sanjana Srivastava who writes to us from the city of Mumbai holds 30 shares of Hindalco which is bought at around 400 odd rupees wants to know if the stock will touch levels of around 500 and what are the steel stocks she can buy for now well interesting query there uh, well ashish what would you recommend on that considering that hindalco's 52 week high was 504 so do you think that those levels will definitely be tested at uh, any point that there is an upside cycle which hindalco will see and hence maybe it is better to hold on and additionally which other stocks within the entire metal space would you recommend Uh, so if you look at hindalco uh, the stock has been consolidating for quite some time i think uh, mm. the it touched around in january the level of around 500 it corrected from there and it's just moving in a range we are yet to see that momentum pick up in the commodity space and the, especially the metal space but uh, nevertheless i think uh, it's better to hold on to the stock but the time horizon has to be increased at least to a year's time uh, not over the short term and we can yes expect it to cross even that 500 level so hindalco is looking good to me even if you can look at jsw still that is a good uh, spare, uh, stock to be at so maybe book partial profits or maybe around these levels uh, book out of hindalco partially not fully and invest something into jsw just to diversify the risk and uh, jsw is relatively stronger compared to hindalco but both the stocks are good i think hold on to this stock for a year's horizon okay fundamentally uh, shaina your recommendation I believe in the medium term uh, is likely to consolidate at current levels. I don't see any upside at least for the next uh, couple of quarters. The main reason being aluminium prices have actually come off. I mean they're pretty low as of now, and uh, the issue is uh, with China being you know which is the largest producer. There the volumes are expected, the supply is expected to increase going forward. So demand is also subdued. So I would uh, sort of stay away or book profits in uh, in Alco for now. and relook at it after a couple of quarters okay all right so that's the view coming in on hindalco well uh, there is also a couple of these result reactions which are filtering through so pnb housing finance uh, the profit is up around 47% year on year and you can see that the stock is reacting well to it revenue up around 21% on a year on year basis so stock is up around 2 and a half odd percent we'll get more details uh, with regards to the disbursements uh, etc this quarter but as you can see it's a good reaction on the profitability which has risen almost 50% uh, year on year for pnb housing finance well for the markets absolutely flat at this point in time the bank nifty however showing some amount of pressure now so down around 3 tenths of percent take a break and be back with lots more queries on the other side stay tuned
Welcome back. Uh, well, for the markets, it's a lot of stock-specific action which is in focus. So, SJVN stands out. That stock is up around 20-odd percent in today's trading session. It's zoomed to the high point of the day and uh, has, given, um, has given returns of 74% year-to-date. Well, we have important news coming in where ITC, where the board has given an in-principle nod for the demerger of the hotels business. This is extremely important news and an extremely important trigger for ITC as well. Remember, ITC has been in focus on account of the kind of returns that that particular stock has seen. We'll wait by for more details, but this has been largely in the works for ITC, where the management has also indicated that this is a larger scale plan that the company is looking at uh, in terms of demerging the FMCG business away from the hotels business. So that would be something that would be a big trigger. But the reason why you're probably not seeing the stock move up in terms of an immediate reaction is simply because the stock has seen a huge amount of gains just in the past uh, year odd. Uh, for example, this year odd that uh, the stock has given returns of around 47% on a year-on-year -year basis. So that's uh, the news which is coming in. The board has approved an incorporation of a wholly owned subsidiary of the company. We'll try and get Manglam on board to give us more details at this point in time. Remember, the stock itself has given strong returns. So maybe that bit of news with regards to the hotel demerger, though important, has probably already been factored in. The company will hold 40% stake in the new entity. So these are more details coming in. The balance shareholding of about 60% will be held directly by the company shareholding uh, shareholders. We do have Manglam on board uh, to give us more details. Well, Mangam, Manglam, this is a news break confirmed, a CNBC TV 18 news break com confirmed and something which has been on the cards, give us more details. Well, it has indeed been on the cards, but uh, we knew that you know the ball was set to roll as uh, uh, you know, as early as last uh, month itself, and as a result of which, this is the first step in uh, 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 looking at alternate structures for the hotels business. The board has gone ahead and indeed given an in principle nod for the hotel business demerger. Uh, just a little about the hotel business of ITC. It contributed about less than 5% of the overall revenues of the company and the EBIT over the last one decade or so. It accounted for nearly 20% of the company's overall capex in the past. So what this basically does is takes the low return on capital business off their books. Uh, FY23 EBIT for the business was at a near decade high of 21 odd percent. And most analysts value ITC's hotel business anywhere between 16 to 20 times FY25 EV to EBITDA. Remember, Indian hotels itself trades at around 25 times uh, FY25 EV to EBITDA, so mild discount to ITC's hotel business. The timing of this is extremely important, largely because uh, uh, the, the last couple of years have seen a resurgence in the hotel business. Before that, we saw a lot of problems with the hotel industry as a whole, low occupancies, high capex, high debt, and uh, then the pandemic. But thereafter, hotel business has seen a resurgence across the board. We've seen that in the way prices have uh, panned out for all the other hotels as well, the stock prices as well as the average room rates and occupancies. Now, this is a good time largely because going forward, everyone believes that maybe the average room rate will not see the growth that it has seen in the last couple of years, largely because beyond this point, it will start to hit occupancy. So this was the perfect time for ITC to go ahead and demerge their hotel business. So in FY23, they did revenues of close to around 2,600 odd crores with an EBITDA of 832 odd crores. But if you just take a look at the multiples that uh, analysts have ascribed to it, anywhere between 15 to 25 times, the price per share of the hotel's business for ITC could be anywhere between 12 to 20, depending on the multiple that you give it, between 15 to 25 times itself. But the short point, the stock's seeing some bit of profit taking, but a large part of that was anticipated. Um, the street has uh, finally heard from ITC with regards to demerger of its hotel business. Okay, all right. Uh, well, Manglam, you know, just wanted to revisit the fact that, you know, what is the reason for this demerger of the hotels business? What is it going to do to the ITC FMCG business uh, per se? Is it because there was too much capex in the hotel business that was weighing the stock down? Well, uh, you know, apart from that, it's one, uh, unlocking the value. Secondly, uh, hotel business, the company had in the past said that, you know, they will support alternate structures 
for that business uh, the minute it reaches a certain scale and scale it had reached close to around 2600 crores of revenue 800 crores of ebit as well but like i said you know hotels accounted for nearly 5% of the company's uh, revenue as well as the operating profit over the last 10 years but they accounted for more than 20% of the capex in the past so as a result of which it was a business that had lower return on capital than all the other parts of their business so as a result of which uh, perhaps demerging that and housing that in a separate entity would mean that the businesses which are currently in itc uh, this uh, you know the, the businesses that are directly owned by itc will have higher return on capital and that would perhaps mean that the multiples that those businesses could enjoy would be a little more as well as against hotel business which could be trading anywhere between 15 to 25 times ev to ebitda Okay, all right, Manglam. Thanks very much for that, and congratulations on the big break as well. We had uh, basically reported this in the first week of July, but uh, just uh, want to put it into perspective that there is an AGM on the twelfth of August as well. So ahead of that, there was an expectation that this demerger announcement would probably take place. Shaina, would you have a quick view on this? Yeah, I would think that uh, you know it's a very positive move, and don't forget you have FMCG also that is there, you know, somewhere to value unlock uh, some couple of quarters years down the line. And I think when it uh, delists and relists, I would say the hotel business should quote at least at fifty bucks, at least ten percent of the current uh, stock price. So there is upside even from here in my view. ITC remains a buy. Okay, and technically, Ashish, would you have a view on ITC, which is already given returns of close to fifty percent year to date, barring the current movement? Uh, see, yes, the ITC has been uh, constantly moving higher. It has uh, already outperformed a lot. So, I would say the stock is overbought, uh, but that does not mean that you should sell it. Uh, the support of the stock is at around four fifty. As long as the same remains four fifty to four fifty five levels remains intact. I think the view will remain bullish, and uh, if today's high around 500 is taken out, I think the stock can be headed much higher towards 530 levels. Okay, all right. So 530 is the level technically which uh, Ashish is recommending on ITC. So important news, but the stock is down around two odd percent at this point in time. Uh, one of the key reasons for the demerger of the hotel business is because of the capex, which is around 20% of the total capex, but the hotels is only 5% of the total sales for the company. But let's move on. We'll try and get you more details and more perspective with regards to this big story. But uh, as of now, we just have time for another query. Manishankar M writes to us from Noida. He holds 2,000 shares of Heritage Foods, which he's bought at around 136 rupees, so sitting on a profit there. Long-term investor wants to know what to do: hold or sell this particular stock. Uh, Shaina, what would you recommend? I would book part profits because you know after they had a rights issue at rupees ten in January twenty twenty three, and uh, after that the stock has actually gone up instead of you know correcting. So valuations have become very expensive, and uh, in my view, you know it, it's better to book out partly because the if you see the actual financial ratios, they're very poor. You have uh, it's single low single digit. You have your margins low uh, return ratios. So I think one should book profits. They are milk products, which is doing pretty well. But at the same time, I don't think the valuation justify holding it as of now. Okay, and Ashish. Uh, see, over short term, we can see over past four to five days, uh, Heritage Food has moved from 220 levels to 284. That's a steep jump that you can clearly see. The volumes have been picking up, so I would definitely recommend him to book out partially on this stock and keep riding using a prior day low as a stop loss. This is to ensure to just to capture that momentum as and when it goes. So. From here, in case the stock goes towards that 310, 320 level, so he's still riding the trend and not having the fear of missing out. So I would recommend uh, book partially. Definitely, the stock is overbought, but keep riding it using a prior day as a stop loss, prior day low as a stop loss. Okay, all right. Uh, well, on that note, Ashish as well as Shaina, I'm going to thank you. Thanks very much for joining in and. Uh, sharing all your answers on all the queries that we had, as well as your view on ITC, which has now become the second top loser on the Nifty, down two and a half odd percent post the announcement with regards to the hotels business team merger. It's giving company to the likes of Reliance Industries as well, Kotak Mahindra Bank. All three of these stocks under pressure at this point in time. Uh, that's all the time that we have on the show. But do remember to email us all of your queries, and we will be addressing them with our experts. Stay tuned. Closing bell to take hits with the last star of trade.